and welcome. My name's Stephen Dickens, and you're joining us here on a Futurum Tech webcast. We're coming to you to talk about Ripple and their CBDC Innovate 2023 competition participants. I'm joined by Francesco Pickley from Amchain. Hey, Francesco, welcome to the show. Thank you. Hey, Stephen. Thank you for having me. So let's do some introductions first before we dive in. What's your role and what do you do for Amchain? Yeah, I'm, I'm a senior director at Anchain. I lead the product development effort uh, at the team. And I've been here for around three years and a half. Fantastic. Exciting times to be in, uh, in this space for sure. It is indeed. So Love let's get the know. listeners and viewers orientated first. Tell us a little bit about Anchain and what you guys do. Yeah, so Anchain is a security and risk management company based out of the San Francisco Bay Area. We provide products and services to three different buckets, uh, starting from crypto native companies, all the way to financial institutions and enterprises and government from regulators and, and law enforcement. Uh, specifically, we, um, we provide services and products around compliance and security. Uh, and um, to be more specific, we uh, have a set of a suite of products for that are used by these three buckets for either anti-money laundering purposes or to protect um, these buckets, mm -hmm. well, these companies' customers from hackers or bad actors in the space, and investigate when you know money is actually stolen and is moved around all the way to points of liquidation. So we, we help in the entire life cycle of uh, protect, protecting digital assets and customers of um, company that provide digital asset services and products. Uh, we help them monitor it and we help recover uh, when bad things unfortunately happen. So Francesca, tell us a little bit about how you found out about CBDC Innovate and your workings with the Ripple team and their CBDC platform. Yeah, so we've been working in the XRP Ledger ecosystem for around two years now. Uh, we built several products uh, on XRPL and we, we know a lot of like different ecosystem players, in, in, including Ripple. And um, I believe it was like at the Apex Developer Conference that happened in Amsterdam a couple of months ago that I heard about uh, the Ripple CBDC Innovate uh, Hackathon. Actually, not true. Uh, I heard about it before. I heard it like this summer uh, from one of my contacts at, um, at Ripple. And we decided to participate because this is like a very promising area of digital assets. There is a lot of research and development being been done around CBDCs, uh, central bank digital currencies. And as part of uh, that development effort, uh, there can only uh, be actual deployment in, in production and real time and uh, real world use cases if there's um, anti-money laundering and risk management practices and procedures and tools around it. So we decided to participate and bring those best practices and, and tools to the industry. So from the pre-read materials and looking at the solution, you guys focus in on that analytic space for governments and for organizations. Tell me a little bit about kind of how the on-chain solution does that with regard to the Ripple CBDC platform. Absolutely. And uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, we provide... We're basically an analytic layer on top of um, the XRP ledger, right? Uh, and uh, on top of like uh, any sort of like blockchain protocol. So we ingest a lot of the uh, raw blockchain data and we have several AI algorithms uh, that we developed in house that help us make sense of that data and help our customers make sense of that data. Uh, so specifically, there is very specific use cases that uh, these can be used for. In our, in our case, uh, we provide data that is that facilitates uh, all the anti-money anti -money laundering 
practices that certain uh, companies need to um, need need to apply internally because of regulation, right? So uh, if a company is launching a, a digital asset, they need to have uh, they need to make sure they're not transacting with, transacting with a sanctioned individual or they're not transacting with like a hacker wallet, right? And same goes on, on, on the government side, right? Well, a little bit differently, but uh, on the government end, uh, there's regulators and there's law enforcement that we work with. Um, law enforcement agency, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Um, there's a hack, there's misbehaviors, there's suspicious behaviors. There needs to be uh, they, they need to investigate these sort of behaviors and ideally like bring it to court and build cases. So we give them like a, an analytics tool to actually look at uh, these bad behavior. And for example, a customer loses money due, due to a hack uh, and we get, we give law enforcement agencies all across the world a tool to go and investigate where this money is going and ideally get to source of liquidations such as exchanges and collaborate to, to actually get that money back. Um, we also help on, you know, any sort of like regulatory effort, uh, of course, needs to um, be backed by strong analytics. So we, we provide uh, strong analytics around digital assets and smart contract and CBDC as part of this effort uh, to regulators to uh, help regulate the market and make sense of it. So you mentioned AI, obviously a hot topic right now. Can you just double click on some of those algorithms and how you're applying AI to to sort of augment that on-chain solution and, and, and what you're doing with the CBDC platform from Ripple? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And on a very high level, you you know, we, we live in the in the era of data and, and big data specifically. And blockchain data is is massive there's a lot of like raw data that is generated every second on, on the blockchain that is very hard to make sense of so we we use ai as a tool to help ourselves and our customers actually make sense of that data that translates into into different sort of use cases right on on one end for example we provide an ai generated risk score to entities and wallets on the blockchain based on like their on-chain behavior. You can imagine there's millions, millions of wallets out there transacting, millions of entities. Uh, if you were to actually like manually screen those entities and manually like try to go and find their behavior, that would be an impossible job. You would need like so many people to do that. So we, we have a patent that we, uh, for AI algorithm that we developed to actually rescore these these wallets and entity on the blockchain. So that's that's one area where we use AI. Another one is um, around understanding code that is deployed on the blockchain. To give you an idea on, um, you know, if, if you're familiar with the, con with the concept of uh, smart contracts, that's that's code. Those are pieces of code that are deployed on the blockchain with certain instructions that uh, sort of like um, uh, run run by themselves, right? That those that pieces of code sometimes is very hard to understand, uh, especially for non blockchain developers who need to uh, understand what's going on in the market. So we provide plain English explanations as well as like explanation of potential vulnerabilities in that pieces of code. Uh, in like through LLMs, large language models. So we integrated, for example, with OpenAI, uh, GPT-4, to make sense of those lines of code. Uh, another uh, use case that we have internally is around investigations. So I'll go brief, brief on this, but uh, a lot of the investigations that happened in the past 10 years for like some, some of the biggest hacks or big butchering cases uh, and, and fraud in general has been manual, meaning that an investigator would have a case, well, would need to find a case or would have a case coming into their plate and they would need to manually go and investigate those cases by clicking 
on blockchain explorers or blockchain investigation tools, you know, hundreds of times uh, to find all the relevant parties involved. It's a very manual and uh, manual job and time consuming at the same time. And certain investigations would take, you know, weeks to actually you know, like unfold. We developed like an AI tool that uh, automatically traces that money for an investigator uh, and uh, allows investigators to complete entire investigations in the span of like seconds. So that, that's been a big innovation in the space. And it's been saving like a lot of head um, headaches to investigators in the private and public sector that now can can focus on on you know uh, jobs that are less tedious and less manual. That makes perfect sense. It's a, it's a, it's a that kind of leads on to my final question, which is around security. I know f- from our conversations and that some of the pre read material I've had from the Ripple team. OnChain's been working with government agencies, particularly in the security space. So what have you been doing to bring AI, um, and, and it, particularly into that security space with the Ripple CBDC platform? It's a great question. And that's one of our biggest priorities right now. And it, it's a topic that we're spending a lot of time and energies and resources on. Um, Basically, like the, the entire digital asset Web3 space um, has not reached a, a good security posture yet. Its security maturity is um, it's not up to par to traditional, the traditional software industry. And we've seen these in the past year, really, with all the hacks that happened. Around $4 billion were stolen in um, in blockchain related hacks. Um, unfortunately, that is not a great incentive uh, for institutions to actually jump in the space and launch products and services in the space, uh, especially for the uh, sake of this discussion, for a central bank uh, rating that $4 billion are, have been stolen in the past year due to hacks um, is not, is going to push any, any sort of CBDC effort back, unfortunately, right? Back. Yeah, it's going to make step. people reluctant to adopt technology because they, there's still this concern that we see in the market. So, so where is on-chain AI kind of in that space and how are you addressing some of that? I don't want to say reluctance because I don't think it's reluctance, but some of that sort of caution that maybe exists in the marketplace. Yeah, um, so th- this is exactly where we come in. Right? We, we're trying to bring best practices from the traditional cybersecurity world applied to in traditional software industry to Web3 as well. Mm-hmm. Um, there's very clear standards and recommendations from uh, institutions out there on um, frameworks around cybersecurity and what companies should adopt to secure their critical infrastructure. So there is um, the, the most um, famous one is probably the NIST, N-I-S-T, Cybersecurity Framework, um, the National Institute of Standard and Technology Cybersecurity Framework, uh, which has five steps that um, companies and entities should take to uh, secure their, their, infra- their software infrastructure. Uh, those five steps are not fully developed in by companies that are building in the blockchain world. So um, th- those steps go from you know identifying vulnerabilities to uh, protecting uh, those vulnerabilities, you know monitoring and and detecting uh, sort of like potential attacks, recovering, responding. You know there there's multiple like clear steps that are outlined out there. Unfortunately, like there's not a there's no tools and yet education in the Web three space uh, for that. So we, you know, all of our products fit into that framework. Uh, can we help company identify vulnerabilities? Uh, can we help uh, um, and, and governing institutions in this case, like uh, central banks, before they go in and launch any sort of uh, product and service? Uh, can we help them identify potential vulnerabilities? 
Can we help them patch those vulnerabilities? Can we help them set up monitoring, um, uh, monitoring like tools and 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 procedures for them to be aware of their critical infrastructure? And this is like where, for example, CBDC Secure comes in, right? Can we help them like have like a full view of their critical infrastructure and uh, the the digital asset that they they release their CBDC? Uh, then can we help them, you know, respond to potential threats, right? Uh, if if there is an attack from from hackers, how would central banks banks respond? What is their response plan? Um, and finally, if some money is actually stolen uh, or the service goes down, can we help them either recover the money by help them investigate using our analytics tool, uh, or can we help them like, recover? Uh, their their infrastructure and then get their product and services back up. So CBDC Secure is a big data analytics platform that allows CBDC issuers uh, to actually have a full view around uh, their anti-money laundering and risk management for the central bank digital currency that they release. From all the discussions I've had and all of our research in this space, I think that's absolutely crucial. I think that scope and the breadth of what you're doing and certainly bringing AI to that with what we're hearing and what we're seeing makes perfect sense to me. So, Francesco, really appreciate the conversation. Thank you very much for your time today. Really enjoyed having you on the show. Thank you, Stephen. Appreciate you guys having me here. You've been listening to the Futurum Tech webcast. I'm Stephen Dickens, your host. Please click and subscribe and do all those things to help with the algorithm. And we'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.